so much motherfucking design on right now. Break it down, bring it back, make it clap. I got three old thoughts, new right. block, where are they? Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Adina Rizati Mendi Mat Azhar and I will start a discussion with the introduction. In my opinion, through the scene in newspaper, what I can conclude is that there is a ship or better known as a literal combatant ship. It's a type of combat ship with a relatively small surface area designed for operations close to the coastline, often used for patrolling, interdiction and other missions in the coastal zone. In the context of Malaysia, the country acquired LCS ships from the United States. According to Web Front 10 2023, the method by which government agencies, municipal governments, and other public bodies acquired labor, products, or services from private enterprises is known as public procurement. A broad range of goods and services are purchased by public authorities, including major infrastructure and urban development projects. The procurement of sophisticated items like weapon system, the commissioning of vital public services in the health and social care sectors, and the purchases of everyday goods like food, furniture, and stationery. In this newspaper article, we can relate that our government buys the LCS from BNS, but they do not provide it. They incurred that the government has provided the money but no progress on LCS. However, in this newspaper article also, the writer stated that this warship was not accepted by the Malaysian Navy TLDM in August 2022. This raised suspicions to the management of the Malaysian Navy because they used the ship to maintain peace and well-being. The author of this newspaper article also stated that the absence of combat ships in the Malaysian naval port is closely related to the political problems between the defense minister, the company that manages the construction of the ship, which is the former minister of defense Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, the current Minister of Defence, Ishamuddin Hussein, the former head of the Navy, Admiral Abdul Aziz Jaffa, and boosted naval shipyard Sunan Berhad BNS. This issue began to arise when the Malaysian Parliament's Public Account Committee, PAC, delivered a report on the acquisition of the LCS, which was made almost two years after the committee began examining the 9.13 billion ringgit Malaysia contract. In the end, the PAC made seven recommendations including declassifying the report on the LCS procurement so that if it could be scrutinized. In addition, PAC has also asked the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC, to study and a result has also been obtained where the charge has been recommended to the court for further action. Next, the PAC also asked the BNS to always provide updates once every three months regarding the completion process of the warship. In order to address this matter, MACC is also asked to gather as much evidence as possible. Mr. Ismail Sabri's pledged that the LCS project would be carried out for the sake of national security and in accordance with the demands of the Navy allowed for the ongoing construction of the system. The issue about littoral combatant ship the non-transparency of littoral combatant ship had not been delivered after government payment. Transparency International Malaysia urged the government not to make for the payment for the LCS. The government has paid RM 6.8 billion. Posted Nawasiya Syndrome Bahad BNS should have completed five LCS ship. The first shipment is scheduled for April 2019. The issue about littoral combatant ship, the non-transparency of littoral combatant ship had not been delivered after government payment. Transparency International Malaysia urged the government not to make for the payment for the LCS. The government has paid RM 6.8 billion. Posted Nawasiya Syndrome Bahad BNS should have completed five LCS ship. The first shipment is scheduled for April. 2019. The issue about littoral combatant ship, the non transparency of littoral combatant ship had not been delivered after government payment. Transparency International Malaysia urged the government not to make for the payment for the LCS. The government has paid RM 6.8 billion. Next, we move to the another problem in this article. We can see that in this article, the writer has said that this case had involved administrator 
from the BNS subsidiary, former Navy Chief Admiral Abdul Aziz Jawa and current Defence Minister Hisham Hussein, who only held the role from May 2013 to May 2018. These people, as we know, have their own positions, as the article said. Somehow, we can estimate that these people are unaccountable because they are not doing their job in a rightful way. It is deeply alarming that there have been instances of incompetence and unethical behaviour in Malaysia's public procurement process for a vital asset such as a SES. Considerations related to national security and large financial outlays accompany the acquisition of such military hardware. Severe repercussions may result from instances of incompetence and ethical behaviour in, uh, in the acquisition of military hardware. This might entail unscrupulous activities like bribes, bribery, or favoritism, which could result in exorbitant prices, subpar equipment, or even hazards to national security if the acquired equipment doesn't satisfy specifications. Governments must guarantee accountability and openness at every stage of the procurement process in order to counter such problems. To prevent unethical actions, this entails putting in place stringent legislation and control systems, holding fair and competitive bidding processes, and carrying out extensive due diligence. To discourage such behavior, it is imperative that robust legal frameworks be enforced with serious penalties meted out to anyone engaged in corrupt acts. In order to avoid such incidents in the future, it is also essential to emphasize ethical training for government employees engaged in procurement and to cultivate an environment of integrity within defense procurement procedures. In the end, ethical behavior in the acquisition of military assets such as LCS is critical for national security, public confidence in government procedures, and financial responsibility. One of the issues is financial expenditure. Financial expenditures consist of interest paid and similar charges. The financial expenditure issue in this article resolved around the Malaysia government's payment of RM 6.8 billion, which represents approximately 66.65% of the total RM 9.13 billion contract for the Littoral Combatant Ships LCS. The project's financial accountability and management are called into doubt by this disparity between the cash commitment and absence of noticeable benefits. The apparent discrepancy between the money allotted for the purchase of warship and the advancement made in terms of ship's delivery may, may worry both taxpayers and government officials. Next. Because public monies are involved and government initiatives are expected to be transparent and fiscally prudent, this financial issue is especially important. The project's finance have probably uh, been closely examined by the Public Accounts Committee PAC, to ascertain whether the government funds have been allocated wisely and whether there is a plausible reason why ship deliveries have not advanced despite significant payments to the contractors. One of the issues is financial expenditure. The problem that arises in this article is tired negotiation. Tired negotiation is a procurement process where an agency may contact a single contractor of its choice to submit a court or tender without having first gone through a competitive process. It is also known as tired dealing or sole resources. In the context of the LCS project mentioned in the articles, the project was awarded to BNS through direct negotiation without an open tender, which is a non-competitive method of procurement by former defense ministers Najib Razak and Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. This means that there was no competitive bidding process which could have resulted in lower cost, better quality and more transparency. The problem that arises in this article is tired negotiation. Tired negotiation is a procurement process where an agency may contact a single contractor of its choice to submit a court or tender without having first gone through a competitive process. It is also known as tired dealing or sole resources. In the context of the LCS project mentioned in the articles, the project was awarded to BNS through direct negotiation. 
Theory based approach. Public procurement refer to the process by which public authorities such as government department and local authorities. Objective of government procurement is to support government programs by obtaining value for money through acquisition of work, supplies, and service. Principle public procurement. Public accountability, transparency, value from money, fair dealing. The theory based approach uh, transparency involves applying relevant theoretical framework to understand, analyze, and implement transparency in various contexts. Transparency is the extent to which information is accessible, visible, and understand to stakeholders. Theory based approach. Public procurement refers to the process by which public authorities such as government department and local authorities. Objective of government procurement is to support government programs by obtaining value for money through acquisition of work, supplies, and service. Principle public procurement, public accountability, transparency, value from money, fair dealing. The theory based approach uh, transparency involves Applying relevant theoretical framework to understand, analyze, and implement transparency in various contexts. Transparency is the extent to which information is accessible. Next, we move to the theory based approach in this case. According to Rahul 2023, professionalism is the aptitude, proficiency, and conduct of an individual in a specific field. It seeks greater performance, elevated standards, and improved relationships with, with clients and colleagues. People who are involved in this case should be more professional and ethical as they are the holder of the position. When it comes to LCS, the Malaysia is buying value for money, means making sure that the government gets the highest return on its investment, while also fulfilling operas operational needs. A few factors such as accountability can be used. As to Cantons 2023, accountability pertains to taking ownership of one's responsibilities, for acting in a morally and honestly manner towards others. In the business sector, a company stakeholder includes its workers, shareholders and the larger community in which it conducts business. Accountability in a broader meaning denotes a readiness to face performance evaluations. In this case of LCS, we can wrap up that politicians from both parties have stoked that story by calling for responsibility and explanations for why the six ships weren't delivered that year. The money that the government provides to PNS for is for preparing the LCS instead of the money for their own goods. These scandals somehow brings a bad image for our country because we know that Malaysia is very strict about the defense system. By providing the money, our army can build up and, and upgrade their weapons, but in this case, it is the opposite. The principle of accountability must be present in every individual because a person's trust is measured through this principle. If there are some individuals who are selfish and use the money for themselves, this will indirectly damage their image and even the money they have used cannot be channeled to the right party in the process of completing the LCS ship. The value of accountability is very important in ensuring the fi that the finance for each project carried out can be channeled and used properly without any interference from outside parties and corruption parties. One of the theory-based approach is tender procedures. Tender procedures is procurement of works, suppliers, and service above the value RM. 500,000 must be done through tender processes. All contractors intending to participate in local tenders must be registered with the government. International tenders will be invited for suppliers and service if they are no locally produced supplies and service available. For specific words, if local contractors do not have the expertise and capability, tenders may be called on a joint venture basis between local and foreign contractors to encourage the transfer of five technology. International tender for words may only be called when local contractors do not have the expertise and capability and a joint venture is not possible. All tenders that exceed RM5 million must be get the approval from the treasury. One of the theory-based approach is tender procedures. Tender procedures is procurement of works, suppliers, and service above the value RM500,000 must be done through tender processes. All contractors intending to participate in local tenders must be registered with the government. 
International tenders will be invited for suppliers and service if they are no locally produced supplies. The LCS project contract price was inflated by 1.4 billion Malaysian ringgit, and there was no proper evaluation of the project. One of the main criticisms of dry rate negotiation is that it lacked transparency. Without a competitive bidding process, it is harder for external parties to assess whether the contract was awarded fairly and whether the taxpayers are getting good value for their money. Secondly, direct negotiation can also lead to accountability issues. Without competitions, there's a risk that contract could be awarded based on favoritism rather than merit. Finally, there's the question of value for money. Competitive bidding process are designed to ensure that contract was awarded to the supplier who can provide the best value for money. Without competition, there's no guarantee that this will be the case. The theory-based approach in public procurement emphasizes the importance of open and transparent competition to ensure value for money, accountability, and fairness. Therefore, the use of direct negotiation in this case contradict these principles. The LCS project contract price The recommendation for lack of transparency that the government investigate all contractors and subcontractors involved in the project along with service servant for negligence in performing their duties in relation to the project. This is how they are most of the involved in the project are those who are acquaintance. This is an abuse of power. When this happens, they will do work by play and a lot of investment will happen. The recommendation for lack of transparency that the government investigate all contractors and subcontractors involved in the project along with service servant for negligence in performing their duties in relation to the project. This is how they are most of the involved in the project are those who are acquaintance. This is an abuse of power. When this happens, they will do work by play and a lot of investment will happen. The recommendation for lack of transparency that the government investigate all contractors and subcontractors involved in the project along with service servant for negligence in performing their duties in relation to the project. This is how they are. Next, we move to the recommendation to solve this case. According to Vela, accepting accountability means owning up to the effects supply chain operations have on the economy, society, and environment throughout the supply chain standards and behavior norms and contractual duties must be established and upheld. Companies need to make sure that all parties involved suppliers, contractors, and workers follow these guidelines. Audits, rectification procedures, and ongoing monitoring are all useful accountability tools for handling non-compliance. We may create comprehensive policies and codes of conduct outlining the moral and responsible behavior required of vendors, contractors, employees, and by establishing explicit rules and codes of conduct. These regulations ought to address things like health and safety, environmental preservation, labor rights, and anti-corruption initiatives. In this case, there is corruption between the past Defense Minister, current Defense Minister, retired Navy General and Company, posted never should be at Syndrome Height. These people need to be taken action because they are not trustworthy in carrying out their duties and they are also involved in using government money for their own interests. Here we can see that the attitude of accountability and codes of conduct are not in them because they take it for granted and they do not worry because they do these things silently without the knowledge of others. This has indirectly made the MACC interrogate them and investigate their cases for the sake of national security and safety. We also can define clear standards of accountability and ethical conduct for individuals involved in the procurement process. This is to ensure that every person who is involved in any projects can be more accountable and trustworthy. When it comes to money, we must be honest and do our job just like we should do it. 
For example, in this LCS case, we ask the people who have been assigned to be responsible for managing the money to prepare the LCS ship need to use the money as best as possible and distance ourselves from any corruption or greed because when such an attitude occurs, a small problem will become bigger and this also exposes ourselves as to serious cases such as money scandals, money laundering that should be used for the LCF shipbuilding project. Thank you and I will pass to my friends to continue the next recommendations. The recommendation is improving the collaboration and communication in the context of Malaysia warship procurement issue is crucial for the successful resolution of the project. The government should form a task force comprising representatives from the Ministry of Defence, Malaysia Navy, Boston Nova Shipyard Sudan Berhad and other relevant stakeholders. The task force should should be responsible for overseeing and coordinating all aspects of the project, ensuring effective communication channels. Besides that, conducting a comprehensive financial audit is essential to ensure transparency, accountability and proper utilization funds in the context of Malaysia warship procurement issues. Every organization or project needs an independent auditor selection that can engage a reputable and independent auditing firm with experience in government projects and defense procurement. It is also important to ensure the auditor has no conflict of interest to maintain objectivity. The financial audit can provide a comprehensive assessment of the financial aspect of the warship procurement project, offering insight into potential issues ensuring compliance and ultimately promoting responsible financial management. The recommendation is improving the collaboration and communication. A possible recommendation to solve this problem is to adopt an open tender, where multiple bidders can submit their proposals and lowest bidders wins the contract. This could reduce the risk of corruption, collusion, and favoritisms and ensure the best value for money, accountability, and credibility. An open tender also enhances public trust and confidence in the project. A possible recommendation to solve this problem is to adopt an open tender, where multiple bidders can submit their proposals and lowest bidders wins the contract. This could reduce the risk of corruption, collusion, and favoritisms and ensure the best value for money, accountability and credibility. An open tender also enhances public trust and confidence in the project. A possible recommendation to solve this problem is to adopt an open tender where multiple bidders can submit their proposals and lowest bidders wins the contract. This could reduce the risk of corruption, collusion, and favoritisms, and ensure the best value for money, accountability, The conclusion, adopt an open tender where multiple bidders can submit their proposal and the lowest bidder wins the contract. The process aims to ensure transparency and fairness in selecting vendor interests. The parties, usually company or individual, submit their bids, outlining their proposed solution and pricing. The selection criteria often include factors such as cost, technical expertise, and experience. This approach encourages competition and helps organizations secure the most economically advantageous solution for their needs. Reduce the risk of corruption, collusion, and favoritism, and ensure the best value for money accountability and credibility. This involves implementing strict monitoring and reporting systems, promoting fair and competitive procurement practices, and fostering a culture of integrity within organization. Enhance public trust and confidence in the project. This can be guided through clear communication, honest and open dialogue and consistently delivering on promise when people perceive a project as trustworthy, they are more likely to support it, invest in it, or engage positive, positively with it. Building and maintaining public trust is uh, crucial for the success of any, sub of any project as it fosters 
a positive perception and collaboration ultimately contributing to overall credibility and sustainability.